Professor Khaled Tinkar, who is the director of SESAME, the synchrotron in the Middle East that we've already heard uh, referred to uh, several times this afternoon. Uh, Professor Tukan has a very distinguished CV uh, covering many uh, different areas of science and policy and you can read about that in the biography. We are going to uh, listen to him as a scientist and a manager and a director of a very uh, ambitious program so please join with me and welcome him to the stage. Thank you, Professor Dudley. Uh, in my presentation today, I will highlight the uh, center that we have worked on establishing over the last 20 years and was successfully inaugurated a year ago. And we thank UNESCO, actually, for its role in bringing Sesame to life. Uh, SESAMI is an acronym of the Synchrotron Light for Experimental uh, Science and Applications in the Middle East. The idea of SESAMI was conceived in the late 90s, in 1998, and actually UNESCO played a pivotal role in bringing uh, countries together in the Middle East in order to build a center of excellence in the Middle East and reverse a brain drain. Uh, this shows Sesame Building in Alain, Jordan, 30 kilometers northwest of the capital Amman. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, another view of uh, Sesame Experimental Hall. Next, please. Who are the Sesame members? Sesame is an intergovernmental organization that was established under the auspices of UNESCO. Sesame statutes were uh, deposited at UNESCO and became in force in the year 2004. Presently, Sesame member states constitute Cyprus, Egypt, Iran, Israel, Jordan, Pakistan, Palestine, and Turkey. In addition, we have a wide spectrum of observer countries who have similar synchrotron facilities, and at the same time, we have two important organizations, namely the European Union and CERN as a sister organization who are uh, observers on the board of SESAME. So these countries and today SESAME's role with what's happening in the world and in the Middle East, definitely SESAME as a source of light in the Middle East is really playing a pivotal role in science diplomacy and particularly when we see the events that are taking place in our part of the world. So originally, the idea of Sesame was conceived in 1998, and over the last 20 years, actually, our part of the world passed through a lot of wars, turbulences, yet Sesame's spirit and Sesame's light prevailed. We always had meetings twice a year, and sometimes, as you see from the countries who are members of Sesame, they were sometimes on opposite sides of the table or uh, going through uh, 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 se severe antagonistic conflicts with it, between each other. Yet Sesame survived. We didn't have a budget that we started with, but we managed to build it piece by piece and really with the good spirit of Sesame member states and the good spirit that joined scientists together to make science work for peace and really promote science diplomacy. Sesame made its way through. We have already established the center, and now Sesame is taking off with science starting to be produced at Sesame. Next, please. So Sesame is a 2.5 giga electron volt light source facility built near the capital Amman, Jordan. It has been modeled on CERN. A lot of our uh, bylaws and regulations were modeled based on the European Organization for Nuclear Research in CERN. The purpose is to foster excellent science and technology in the Middle East and reverse the brain drain and build bridges between diverse societies and really uh, practice science diplomacy and science for peace, which Sesame definitely has succeeded uh, so far. Next, please. 
UNESCO has played a pivotal role um, over the last 60 years. UNESCO was instrumental in creating CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, to enable the construction of a facility beyond means of individual members, particularly after World War II, with the big wars that took place in Europe, and foster cooperation and really put the intellect of top scientists in Europe towards building a state-of-the-art facilities and doing forefront science. That experiment actually was repeated 50 years later. In 1998, the uh, UNESCO director then, Frederico Mayor, championed the cause of creating a similar center in the Middle East. And uh, Jordan, as a country, we were uh, contacted by UNESCO. I recall a visit by Mauricio Siacarino, the DDG of UNESCO then, and uh, Professor Herwig Schopper, uh, who was one of the uh, directors of CERN, who visited us in Jordan and uh, basically uh, uh, requested that Jordan sign Sesame. I have arranged a meeting with His Majesty King Abdullah II then, and based on that meeting, Jordan became a member and the founding member of Sesame, and then after competing with other Sesame members, we became the host country of Sesame, where Sesame has been constructed, built, and operated. The purpose of Sesame, although we work in a difficult political environment and we are still working with the same environment, however, science was the top priority to bring scientists from the region together to sit around the table. We just met 10 days ago in, in Lisbon, in Portugal. We had scientists from Iran, uh, uh, Israel, Palestine, Egypt, Turkey, Cyprus, Jordan, working together, and representatives from member and observer states sitting on the same table and working together to promote science and put light in the service of humanity. Next, please. What is synchrotron radiation? As an electron orbits at very high energies, close to the speed of light, in the case of Sesame, the electron energy is at 2.5 giga electron volt. The electromagnetic field surrounding the electrons is unable to respond instantaneously when the electrons are deflected. Some of the energy in the field keeps going, producing a tangential point of synchrotron radiation. And this light, which is emitted, is being collimated and directed at a given target through a collimated, through a series of collimators, mirrors, and reflectors to hit a certain target where you are able to see through this very intense beam of light up to a single atom or a molecule or do an analysis of the sample that you want to study. Next, please. So with this very powerful light source, which is millions of times more powerful than a typical X-ray machine, we can see up to a single molecule or a single atom using this powerful light. So it's a very, very powerful and strong microscope where you are able to see up to a single atom. And that actually puts the synchrotron light into a broad spectrum of usage, whether in archaeology, biology, environmental science, geology, cultural heritage. Actually, a region like the Middle East, which is very, and one of the most ancient regions with a lot of cultural heritage, we have conducted the first workshop on cultural heritage studying old, for example, Egyptian uh, ceramics and paintings. Uh, we looked at uh, several uh, uh, analysis of samples from bone and teeth of several uh, uh, tombs around uh, the region. Next. Uh, with Sesame, actually, uh, a typical uh, 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 synchrotron source. We start with the microtron or Linux. In the case of Sesame, we started with the old microtron, Bessie one from Germany. Electrons are being accelerated to 25 million electron volts. Then they are transferred to a booster, which increases the energy to 800 million electron volts. And as these electrons reach their top energy, they are then transferred to a third accelerator, which is a storage ring, where the energy is ramped up from 800 million electron volt to 2.5 electron volts, stored for typically 12 hours. And as these electrons are orbiting around the ring, they are given a given, uh, slight kick, and intense beam of light comes through 
the beam lines where samples are analyzed or being viewed through the very powerful light source that we have. Next. Sesame has been established with a lot of support from member states and other observer states. This uh, actually is one of the 16 cells in the storage ring. We have uh, parts actually being built in Spain as an observer country, the quadrupoles. France, we had the sextopole coils. UK coming with the dipoles. Uh, Germany uh, coming with the vacuum chambers. Pakistan with the sextopoles. So it was a group effort and with a lot of inputs coming from Sesame member states and other supporting observer countries. Uh, the, the storage ring has been actually designed by Sesame scientists. However, we had the big support and uh, collaboration with CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Geneva, who helped procure some of the equipment and did some of the installation and testing in their own center. Next, please. Uh, we have planned to start with four uh, day one beam lines, the X-ray absorption fine structure, X-ray fluorescence beam line, the infrared uh, spectral microscopy beam line, the material science beam line, and the macromolecular crystallography beam line. Currently, we have two beam lines who have been commissioned, and science has started at both the XRF and the infrared spectral microscopy beam line. Next. So uh, this is a, a view of the, uh, I, uh, the XRF beam line. This beam line has been uh, commissioned in November of last year. And just uh, a month ago, on uh, end of April, the IR beam line has been commissioned. Next, Next slide. So, uh, so far, Two beam lines are currently operational. The XRF was commissioned on November 22, 2017. The IR uh, beam line has been commissioned through a strong collaboration with a similar synchrotron facility here in France, Soleil, who worked with our scientists. You will hear today from the beam line scientist, Jihan Kamal, who worked and collaborated with Soleil. And one of our colleagues in Soleil, Paul Dumas, actually worked with her over the last few months in order to get this very special beam line operational. As you can see from the spectrum, the typical IR spectrum coming from a synchrotron light source is definitely much stronger, orders uh, it's uh, several times stronger than a typical IR source, in addition to the power of the resolution that you can get from similar, uh, uh, from synchrotron sources compared to conventional IR sources in terms of resolution and intensity. Next, please. So Sesame is still continuing. It's taking off now. We are working on installing two additional beam lines, the macro molecular crystallography beam line, the material science beam line, and currently we are working on installing a tomography beam line. Member states pay their annual contributions to keep on Sesame running. We have a group of external advisory committees coming from top synchrotron facilities around the globe in Europe, United States, Japan, uh, and uh, other countries who help in guiding the scientific program and technical program. Training is done over wide spectrum with similar synchrotron facilities in Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Japan, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, uh, Switzerland, UK, USA, EU. IEA actually has uh, sustained a strong program in building capacity within Sesame in addition to UNESCO and ICTP. We got definitely cash funding from European Union and currently the European Union is funding us with 7 million euros to build a solar power plant. So Sesame will be the first synchrotron light source actually to be powered by renewable energy through a grant by the EU, which will help us cut down the running cost of electricity, which basically is high. We pay around a quarter of a million US dollars for the running cost of electricity. And through support of EU, which helped us in procuring the storage ring, and they are helping us now in building a solar power plant. In addition, the Italian government gave us uh, a total of around 3 million US dollars to build the guest house 
And through the same funds from the Italian government, we were able to procure, actually, the radio frequency cavities that uh, uh, power Sesame. Next. We are still working. There are still challenges. But despite all the turbulence that we had in our region the last 20 years, Sesame made it so far and will continue to make it. We will work politically and technically. The XRF and IR beamlines are now operational. And within the next few months, we will have two additional beamlines, the material science and macromolecular crystallography beamline operational, in addition to working on the construction of a tomography beamline. So indeed, light is a source of hope for people. And Sesame's light has shown, despite all the turbulence around us, and will continue to shine over the next few years, bringing science, peace, and hope for our region and for the world. Thank you.